2011, this amazing discovery was unearthed. A diary my grandmother had written some 42 years before was returned to her. And she was giving me the responsibility to decide what to do with it. When the pages that make up this journal were returned to me after so many years, I did not want to read them. I was afraid. There are memories that hurt so much you do not want to remember. But at the same time, I was glad to be able to tell our children and grandchildren what we went through. When I was held in solitary confinement, I was held in the death cell in, uh, in Pretoria. First thing you do when you get into the cell uh, is to with that at least you have a pin or something on you so you can scratch the calendar on the wall. And uh, that is how I kept sane because you lose track of the time and date. It had three doors. Uh, you had your door, and then the grill door, and then the door, and the sound of those keys. You would hear the first door opening. The sound of the clinging of, of those keys, you know, was, was part of the torture system. And each time, when you have just come to prison, each time they did that, it opened the cell. It, it hit you right into your heart. My grandfather wrote to my mother and my aunt to reassure them that everything will be okay, even under the circumstances of both of them being virtually orphans. My darlings, once again our beloved mommy has been arrested, and now she and daddy are away in jail. My heart bleeds as I think of her sitting in some police cell, 24 hours of the day, longing for her little ones. We have a brave and determined mommy who loves her people with all her heart. She gave up pleasure and comfort in return for a life full of hardship and misery. And I remember at some stage when my sister and I were asleep, we were actually removed from the bed and they searched under the mattress. I remember things like that and they would actually take my mother and go off with her without a care as to who we'd be left with. They would bring this porridge on top of uh, your, your uh, toilet, uh, bucket, they turn the bucket upside down, they put your food there, and uh, the, the uh, water stands at the door and kicks in the bucket. Couldn't even save you with their, their hands because that would lower their, their dignity. That is the extent to which they dehumanized you. I reached a point, I think a threshold where the body could not take the pain anymore, and then I would faint. And uh, when they threw a bucket of water to wake me up, it didn't matter that I was soaking wet. I got up, I was so refreshed, and I started fighting all over again. They can rather take my life, I don't care. But I will fight to the last drop of my blood. I had noticed that the name Winnie was beginning to be forgotten by even my family. Everything was Mandela's wife. I became a nobody, and I had grown up in Pondoland. I had walked tall from my background, from my grandmother and my people of Pondoland, who are a very, very proud, 
proud ethnic group, a group that is known uh, as warriors in the country. And I wanted it known that it was Winnie Mandela and not Mandela's wife. And I will show them that women are going to bring about change in South Africa. And we did. It is Zanyiwe, meaning trial. I cannot believe my mother and my father named me that trial. Why? At the time, a baby is born. What trial were they thinking of? And then I spent all my life in the course of this country on trial. <laughs>